Are you as tired of travel content as I am? Stop, stop, no, no, no. This is exactly what I mean. You've seen this a hundred, a thousand times. And it is the reason why I almost started to hate travel content as a consumer and as a creator, because it is all fake. And I think you need to know that as a viewer, as a travel and as a creator, you need to know that it gets boring. Travel content gets incredibly boring after a while. I'm still thinking back to the days where travel content would take me to those magical places that I did not even think existed. And they don't. Not really. We'll get to that. What I'm trying to say is these days, watching and creating travel content for me probably feels like this setup feels for you. No matter how you look at it, there's not much depth to it and there's really only so much you can do around here. Once you see it for what it is, it really does not get any more exciting than this. It stays the same plain white wall. And that's the same for me watching travel content. Blue as water, magical sunsets, epic landscapes, but nothing new. But here's something unexpected. Before you travel, traveling is a desire. It is the one thing you are looking for. And maybe you even got a taste for it. It's like that one person that you've met that felt special. It becomes the only thing you can think about. But after a while, you get used to it. It becomes the norm until you can't even see it anymore. It can be right there sometimes. It can be right next to you. But the only thing you start caring about after a while is how it looks to the others. Well, until you realize that that this is gonna be awesome on Instagram. It gets even weirder when you want to turn this into your career because then this, this is your life now. Most of the days I have literally nothing to show you but this, me sitting in front of a laptop in a van working away. Meanwhile, I feel obliged to tell you how awesome my life is every day. But nobody wants to see this day in, day out. And honestly, I don't want to even do this anymore. What about you? No. Last year when I started traveling, I thought that was going to be the game plan. I'm traveling, I have my camera, I'm going to shoot travel content. And in a way, I did shoot travel content. I mean, but I just realized it's not something I like doing because I felt that it takes me out of the moment completely. So what were the reasons or what was the main reason that you actually stopped making travel content? I think it was multiple factors. For one, the first couple of months we were traveling in very warm areas and I was like running around like crazy with my gimbal and my heavy ass lens and camera, sweating my balls off and I thought like, man, is this what I've been preparing for a full year? Like, yeah, I finally uh, skip the 9 to 5 and uh, live the dream life. But it was like, it's not what I was expecting. This is a little bit hypothetical, but do you feel like travel content and travel creators, maybe unintentionally, have created this world of expectations that is not really out there? Yeah, definitely. Because once I started following some uh, of those travel influencers, man, I, in my head it was like, wow, there's so many cool places to see and, and it's like almost this dreamlike avatar kind of role for us to explore. But once you're there, it's not as magical as they portray it to be. There's no sound effects, there's no drone shots, it's fucking hot, there's bugs. The color grading isn't <laughs> as it is in the, in the footage. So you're telling me that a Southeast Asia is not all teal and orange? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. And it's not always golden hour over there. So yeah, they do set some kind of unrealistic expectations, but in some other way, they also cannot capture some magical things every country in the world has to offer, which you do get to experience. Thanks, man. Stefan has made a whole video about his experience traveling and creating content. We've been here in Koh Samui for 28 days now, for the full month of February, and I haven't vlogged even once. 2022 was supposed to be the most defining year in our lives, but nobody told me nothing would go as planned. And now he focuses on what he's really passionate about while traveling. And guess what I did? I just faked this interview, which brings me to my last point. So am I saying that really everything is fake? Not quite, but let's think about it for a second. The very fact that I'm bringing my camera 
at a specific time, to a specific place, with a specific plan in mind, alters and distorts the experience. And the prettier, the more curated and the more intentional it is, the better content it makes. The very fact that I'm creating content takes away from the moment as it would be without that fact. I mean, look at this window. Do you think that background happens to be there by accident? What I'm trying to say is, you can't live what you display. Nobody can. As soon as you point a camera at your life, as soon as you put it on a screen or on a stage, you jump out of the system in a way. And whatever you claim your life is, is now over there while you are over here. Which is why I stopped. I wanted to live the travel life. I wanted to travel. I wanted to experience it. But showcasing my life isn't living it. It's planning, curating and framing a narrative that would have never been there if not for me creating it in the first place. And that's fake. Which doesn't mean that influencers and creators are not genuine. Aiden Robbins made this video about how travel content literally changes the places it promotes. And Christian Schaefer made a video about all the troubles of van life and how they maybe are not worth it. So the point I'm really trying to make is that I think we should consume and create travel content knowing that moments can't be recreated or captured. They can only be told or they can be lived. And it's up to you what you make of it. I see you.